Have you ever been setting around and trying to decide what modulation effect should I buy? And you just sit there, the years go by, people leave, friends go away, and you still haven't decided. Well, today's episode's for you. I'm gonna go through every single type of important modulation effect, let you hear what they sound like, and explain the basics of how they function. And after this, you're gonna be like semi-pro modulation master. Simply put, modulation means to move. So all the effects we're about to show you move the pitch or the sound of your guitar. And one of the reasons modulation is so confusing is because some modulation effects can bleed into others. But we're gonna start really simple with the very first modulation that's pretty much ever heard in modern music and that is tremolo. Tremolo is the first effect here and it is a modulation effect. It's often not thought of that way because it doesn't modulate pitch. Every effect after tremolo, you're gonna notice deals with the pitch of the actual note you're playing. Tremolo is modulation of volume. So imagine you're in your car, you're cruising down the road, you're listening to Def Leppard, Garth Brooks, doesn't really matter, and you reach over to the volume and you turn it up, down, up, down, up, down. You are modulating the volume between a low volume and a high volume. So that is the effect of tremolo. The very first tremolo unit ever is from the late 40s. It is the D. Armin tremolo unit. This is actually the first ever standalone effect. Um, lots of tremolos after that. And one of the most classic is the Boss TR2. So I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna show you a couple different sounds. You will instantly recognize that you've heard this. It's in tons of songs and it is a really beautiful effect that helps build riffs, makes chords move. It's awesome. The next modulation effect to understand historically is around the same time as that tremolo, and it is the rotating speaker effect. We see this most popular with Hammond organ and the rotating Leslie speaker. Now, this is basically a big wooden cabinet. Here's a picture of one. It has two speakers in it. That top speaker is a treble horn speaker and it rotates. It's throwing the sound out in a 360 form. So this is a type of Doppler modulation. Say you're standing on the street and an ambulance passes, the sirens actually modulate because of distance and movement. So it's a really beautiful sound and you can use an actual Leslie cabinet we have. There's an episode called Legendary Choruses, I believe is what it's called. And uh, we drag that out, but I don't want to drag it out today because it weighs a thousand pounds. We're going to do this with a really cool DSP pedal. There are some really great ways to do the Leslie simulation, Leslie effect in the modern age, thanks to digital signal processing. One of my favorites is the Strymon Lex. It even has the fast slow. You're going to hear it go change speeds and it's going to do it really smooth. It's going to ramp up and down just like a Hammond and a Leslie. Yeah. So here we go. Next up at number three is the effect called Univibe. This came to us in the late 60s, right at the end of the decade, and it's a rather big effect. It has a foot controller as well. And you saw this on stage with Jimi Hendrix. You hear it on Robin Trower Records. It's a really beautiful sound. A lot of the players who originally played it used it to replicate 
rotary speaker, even though that's not necessarily what it does well. I think that this does that much better. The inventor Fumio Mieda is a brilliant engineer from Japan, and this was a company called Honey that eventually turned into Shinai, and he designed this for that company, and when he had the inspiration for it, he wasn't thinking Leslie Rotary, he was replicating the sound of Russian radio waves interfering with radio waves in Japan, and it phased in and out. So you'd be listening to something, and the signal would get kicked in and out of phase. And that's technically what's going on here. This is a very complicated phaser, but more than that, it is the genesis or the mother of all modern modulation effects. Because this is the late 60s, and everything you're about to see after this is the 70s. Um, this started it all. Anything you see after this effect pretty much comes from the fact that this is the first. This is the phasing effect of the Univibe. It has a chorus vibrato toggle. That can be a bit confusing because in chorus mode, it's not really a chorus. It's a phaser, but it's not quite a phaser. It's a univibe. That's why we're singling this out and making it its own category. When you go to vibrato, it simply removes any dry, clean signal from the mix, and you have a true just C sit kind of back and forth phase sound. So I'm gonna play, not this, I'm gonna play my unicorn, shameless plug. And I'll demonstrate kind of fast and slow sounds. I'll do a Hendrixy kind of thing, and then I'll play the vibrato sound, which removes all the dry, and you have that seasick kind of feeling. <laughs> Now that you've heard Univibe, a type of phaser, let's talk about what we all think of and know as phaser. Now, this is from the 70s and everything from this point on is very much 70s. Everything we think about modulation as a whole really hasn't been improved on or changed much. It's a very 1970s thing. You know, we had Nixon, disco, sports stuff, whatever. A lot of things happened, but really modulation happened. It was the decade of modulating pitch in different ways. And in 1974, we see Rochester, New York company, MXR, come to the market with the phase 90s, their first product. Um, there was a couple other phasers before this, but at the end of the day, this is the most recognizable phaser ever made. And to explain this, I have a little chalkboard here. So phasing is this simple. You have two waveforms. So this is your clean signal. There's the mountain, there's the valley of it. And when you strum a note, hit a note or strum a chord, pause. When, <laughs> What's this when you pick a note or strum a chord, you essentially create a waveform like that. Now what phasing does is it doubles that and it creates a 180 degree version of the waveform. Now, this is actually silent. If you listen to exactly 180, you don't hear anything, but phasing has an LFO, and basically this is a type of oscillator that's gonna move this waveform. So imagine wave two sliding back and forth underneath the clean signal. And as it does that, that is the sound of the swooshing and whooshing we think of with phasers. So back and forth. Now, it is much like the sound you heard in the Unicorn Univibe, but it's a true sine wave. It's really smooth. The Univibe has a harsher drop off in the waveform. It almost has a throbbing, pulsing type sound. Whereas a phaser as we know it is pretty smooth and it does it just perfectly, the classic sound of phase. So that's how it works. I'm gonna play the phase 95. This is a really affordable, newer take on having some different sounds from the history of MXR and just a really good package. You can hit this button and go between the phase 45 or the phase 90, and then you can have the script here. 
all I'm saying is it's a good phaser. It's easy to use, small, and it's simple. So here's classic phase. <laughs> Next up is the effect called Flanger. One of my favorites is the Electric Mistress. This was one of the most popular effects of the 70s, and it is kind of related to how a chorus pedal is. I don't want to jump ahead. I'll get to that in a minute, but it's more complex. Basically, what is happening here is you have two of the same signal mixed together, and one of the signals is, is delayed, delayed just, just a little, a little bit, bit, like, like a, delay a delay pedal. pedal. And that's about 20 milliseconds. It's just barely off. And then the output of this effect, those two combined signals, that output, part of that is fed back to the input and that creates this delay line feedback loop and it kind of layers the sound and as you adjust things like rate or range or color, it just intensifies this sonic modulation, kind of like a sandwich, like a sonic modulation sandwich. It's just layers of sound, some of it's moving, some of it's still. You can do chorus sounds with this, but flanger is its own thing. So this is the OG, you know, vintage one. They have a really nice, simple reissue of this that's affordable. So I'm gonna play that. Here's Flange. <laughs> Next effect is the effect called chorus. It is most connected with the term modulation. When I say modulation to many of you or any other guitar player or musician, you kind of think about a chorus pedal. Um, it's also the sound of the 80s. It got kind of exhausting for a while. It's a sound that's back, but compared to phaser or especially flanger, it's pretty simple. Basically, you have your clean signal mit, your mic, mixed, mixed. Basically, you have your clean signal mixed with a modulated signal and to be super clear, pitch modulated. So unlike tremolo moving volume, it's just moving the pitch of your note ever so slightly at a speed that you set with a rate and a depth that kind of controls how much of that is in comparison to your clean signal. It's really simple and it is the most famous modulation there is. This is a classic, this is a 1981 Silver Screw CE2. Uh, pretty much every chorus pedal that you know of is some variation of this most likely. There is the Waza chorus. This is like the reissue of that. I highly recommend it. I mean, I have a three series chorus. There's there's hundreds of choruses. So, and honestly, they're all pretty good. So I'm going to play this one. And this is the sound that most people associate with modulation. oversimplify the crap out of this next version of modulation just so you understand it. What happens when you take a chorus and remove the dry part of it, the dry signal? Well, if you oversimplify it just for educational purposes, you have vibrato. 
That's really the difference. I'm not saying the circuits are the same. This is more complicated the way they made this because it's a beautiful effect. But if you remove the dry, clean signal, you have vibrato. Chorus is the combination of the two. Vibrato is just the modulation. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, when we think of vibrato, it was kind of first heard when you have something like a vibrato arm and you hit a note or a chord and you bend the pitch. So that's what you're gonna get with this. I think that's why they designed the VB2. Uh, there is a Waza version of this as well. It's fantastic. But you know, I'm gonna play an underdog. I'm gonna play something that doesn't get a lot of love. It's the TC Electronics Shaker. It's simple, it's cheap. I think you can buy these used for like 10 bucks. They're probably free. It's a great, great pedal. Let's listen to this. <laughs> This is it. This is the last one. It's a doozy. Um, it is one of my favorites. I've had ring modulation in my board on and off for 20 years, and it's interesting. I find ways to use them. They're really fun, and it's different than the common thing, you know, that you hear most people using like chorus or flanger. Now, you see it in the 70s, things like the frequency analyzer, there's a lot of other, like Mutron had one as well, but they are actually a little hard to find. I was perusing through the room, thousands of pedals in here. There just aren't a lot of ring mods made. One of my favorites is one by Way Huge. It's discontinued as well, but I did have the ring thing here. Um, so I'm gonna use this. This is really fancy. Uh, Electro Harmonics makes some more stripped down, simple ring modulators, but this might be the effect for you if you're weird. now. Explaining what it does is really festive, to say the least. So I actually was like having trouble knowing what it does, but explaining it. And I found a funny blurb on this website. It says, to put it in a more straightforward fashion, ring modulation multiplies two input signals together to create two brand new frequencies, which are the sum and the difference of the input frequencies. Ring modulation utilizes two input signal, the modulator and the carrier. The modulator is nearly always the instrument input signal and the carrier is a signal produced by the ring modulator. Honestly, it's the crazy uncle of the family. You don't even have to know how it works. You just need to know it's crazy. Ring modulator is wild. It's like layers and layers of madness, warbles, pitches, ring sounds, goblin-like tones. It's one of my faves. I hope this was helpful. Um, it's crazy how complicated this can feel. And it doesn't help that historically people like Leo Fender called tremolo vibrato and vibrato tremolo and then flangers will do chorus and chorus has vibrato in it and univibe is actually a phaser but a phaser is not a univibe. It's maddening, so I hope this was helpful. My biggest advice to you, if you wanna understand these effects, is that you really need to play them. You can hear people demo their brains out, but you're never gonna experience what modulation does and really feels like for your music unless you play the different effects. 
They can seem similar through speakers on a computer screen or on your phone, but when you play them, they are significantly different. And that's really important to know. Some things have to be experienced, how your guitar responds to it, the way it moves with your amp. And that's really important. So my suggestion is to get a multi-modulation pedal. There's a couple that I recommend. One is from the year of Y2K. It is the Blue Line 6 MM4. It has everything. There's a rotary here. It literally has everything I showed you and multiple versions of what I showed you. So not only is there analog chorus, there's digital chorus. And not only is there univibe, there's, you know, the phaser that might touch into the univibe. There's different tremolos. It just, it's madness. So this is a really good tool. I think these are cheap. If you go to Reverb, this is not an expensive pedal. And don't listen to people when they say this is not good, because it is good and those people are wrong. My other recommendation is the MD200. This is Boss's latest offering for a very powerful modulation unit. It's wild. Um, again, it has everything here. It actually has auto wah and some things like that. That's technically a modulation, even though I don't think it is, but some people say it is, so take that or leave it. Yeah, get a multi and experience some of this for yourself. And then if you really like an effect in the multi, commit to it and try some singular units for your board. Today's record time is brought to you by a band from the golden age of shoegaze. This is from the early mid nineties and it is Allison's Halo Eye Dazzler. Now this is a husband and wife duo and it's really good. It's very fitting for this episode. There's lots of dreaminess to this record, lots of modulation and delays. The very heart of shoegaze is to move things in a very eerie and beautiful way. Check this record out. If you're a fan of Slow Dive, My Bloody Valentine, anything like that, you're gonna really, really like this record. Yeah, give it a listen. And in the comments below, let me know if you know of this band and what your favorite track is. That's it, I think, that's all. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you now understand modulation a little bit better. If you do, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon for notifications of future episodes. Check out Band Lab, where every jam we do, we didn't jam today. Is that fine? Yeah. It's totally fine. We didn't jam, but we usually do. Go to Band Lab. Our account is in the description below. You can jam with us. It's really fun. And there is a full brand new Patreon for the people who want to support pedal history and the episodes like you've been seeing before today. Things like the Lucy Rush story about the pet box, all kinds of stuff like that where we're traveling and people are helping fund that work of preserving pedal history. So check out that link as well. We'd love to have you be a part of the Patreon JHS Show family. And also check out another link where it says JHS Fresh Clips this is a brand new kind of YouTube section world page where it's just jams, it's just clips. It's kind of a stripped down, easy to digest version of a lot of things that we do here in the long format shows. That's it. Have a wonderful day. Bye.